In our previous unit, we looked at the impact of dimensional change on perimeter and area of 2D shapes, basically 2D, uh, two-dimensional polygons and circles, and also composite shapes. So now we're looking at the impact on solids, the surface area of the solids. Now the surface area of solids is a little more complicated than the surface area of just a 2D shape because it has three different dimensions. And if you, the, and because I'm adding, say for example, in the cylinder, the two bases and the lateral surface area, it's difficult to determine what the impact could be. For example, if I stretch this, I didn't really change the base shape. So that part of the area stays the same, but the other one grew. The only way I can really predict this easily is if the area has changed proportionally. So for example, all of the dimensions have been doubled or all of them have been tripled or all of them have been cut in half. So let's take a look at an example where all the dimensions are doubled. I have a cylinder here and I gave the radius and the height and we're going to find the surface area using the formula for a cylinder. Substituting in the radius and the height, I get that the surface area is 20 pi centimeters squared. Now I'm going to apply a scale factor of 2 to all the dimensions. So now the radius is 4 centimeters and the height is 6 centimeters. Well, I'm still using the same formula. I just have different numbers and I end up getting a surface area of 80 pi. Well, um, if you look at that area and compare it to the original, it is 4 times bigger. I have to multiply this 20 pi by 4 to get 80 pi. In this example, we're looking at the surface area of a sphere. The formula for, for that is 4 pi r squared. And I know the radius is 10 inches, and I substitute. And I get 400 pi inches squared. Now we're going to apply a scale factor of 3, so all the dimensions will be tripled. So my new radius is 30 inches. Now when you do the radius of a sphere, you're automatically changing all three dimensions because not only does the circle get wider, it also gets taller. And if it's a sphere, it gets deeper. So all three dimensions change. So let's find the new surface area. And I have 4 times pi times radius squared. Finally, I have 3600 pi inches squared. And you can see that is nine times bigger. So nine times bigger for the surface area of a sphere when I triple all dimensions. Now on this a rectangular prism, I'm going to quadruple all three dimensions. And let's take a look at the impact on the surface area. Well, um, first of all, let's calculate the original. So it's perimeter times height. And I'm uh, considering the bottom and the top of this prism to be the bases. Um, plus two bases. So the perimeter is 6 plus 8 plus 6 plus 8, the distance around this base, which is 28. The base area is just 6 times 8, or 48. Substituting into the formula, we have 28 times 5, because the perimeter times the height, plus 2 times the area of the base. And I get 236 square units. Now I'm going to apply a scale factor of 4 to this. So all of these dimensions grow by a factor of 4. 5 becomes 20, 8 becomes 32, and 6 becomes 24. My new surface area will have a new perimeter. Um, 2 times, and I did this just to save some space, it's going to be 32 plus a 24, and really plus another 32 and 24, but I can just multiply that sum by 2, and I get 112. The area of the base is going to be 32 times 24, which is 768. Still use the same formula for to, uh, total surface area, substituting in for the perimeter, the height, and the base. And we get 3,776 square units. Well, the area multiplier, if you take this 3776 and divide it by 236, you would get 16. So I have to multiply the original area of the prism surface area by 16 to get the new surface area after every dimension has incre been increased by a factor of 4. So let's take a quick look, a summary on the impact on surface area. When the scale factor was 2, it increased by a, a factor of 4, and that should say surface area. Let me change that.
no, on your sheet it's probably fine. It should say the area multiplier. Uh, when we increased it by a factor of 3 each dimension, it increased by a factor of 9. When we did a factor of 4, it increased by a factor of 16. Notice that it didn't really matter what the original dimensions are. I could have taken a shortcut and calculated the effect by just going 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 3 is 9, and 4 times 4 is 16. So the shortcut is to just do the scale factor squared or scale factor times scale factor and multiply that by your old surface area to get your new surface area. So this an exam in this example we want to determine the impact on total surface area when all edges of a hexagonal pyramid are tripled. Well the scale factor is 3 so I'm just going to do 3 times 3 which is 9 so it's going to be 9 times bigger. So reflect, when can you use a shortcut to predict the impact on surface area? Hopefully you'll remember it's when the dimensions change proportionally. Everything is either doubled or tripled or halved. You do the same thing to all three dimensions.